Okay, so we're recording today's uh, talk, Roy's talk with our artists. So hi everyone, thank you. I'm Lynette Santoro, I'm the director here at Roy G. Biv Gallery and I appreciate your patience as we were dealing with uh, technical difficulties. Welcome to our conversation. Uh, Roy G. Biv Gallery is a nonprofit gallery. We work with emerging artists uh, and we have been exhibiting the work of emerging artists since 1989. We spent 30 years in the short north and most recently we moved to uh, Franklinton in 2019 in this really wonderful space dedicated to the um, visual arts and um, of all medias. So we're very excited to have um, another season of uh, juried work here at Roy. It is a juried space, so we convene um, a jury to review the works and uh, schedule our exhibitions a year at a time. So uh, this is our 2021 season and um, currently in the gallery until May 8th, we have the work of um, Tyler Davis and Annie Chrissy Burley and Amy Wisman. And they're here today to talk a little bit about uh, their artwork. They'll introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their work that's in the gallery, um, maybe a little bit about their process. Uh, each of them is using materials uh, in very interesting ways to create their compositions and um, reacting to uh, their own journey and the world around them. So let's get started. Who would like to begin? Uh, the way I kind of go about things is uh, from alphabet. So, sorry, that's like my go-to because the education system, and everything. So, so I'll throw you all under the bus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, then I'll be first. Hi, my name is Annie Chrissy Burley. Um, I've been making art. I think, no, nah, I don't even think it's just like I, I can't put a finger on it. It's just been something I've been, you know, had a gift of doing for a very long time. And um, where I'm from, I am from Columbus, um, grew up in the Reynoldsburg area um, and graduate from CCAD, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I want to get into a little bit more of my process. So I um, like using um, materials, and images um, and concepts and ways of making that reference back to the animation process because um, I graduated as an animator. I really think that um, what's also very integral to my process is um, just kind of like my own beliefs. Um, and I think this show, I really want to expand upon, I'm, I'm, I'm in conjunction with my faith in like the images that I see. And then um, as a practicing artist with a specific uh, foundation in animation, like what, is, what are the images that I'm making and what are we processing? So I'm having to like relearn the pro my process of art making in general. Um, from just being like me putting down my emotions on kind of like the work unfiltered to being very more exact and thoughtful about what I'm doing. And so I hopefully during this talk and I can go into that a little bit more um, and dive into my inspirations, uh, you know, a little bit more. I've been more self-focused on, you know, not receiving from many different avenues other than um, what uh, I feel like the Lord has placed on my heart uh, to talk about. So um, mostly dealing with paint skins, drawings, um, uh, projection. I have a projection, the animation projection, um, and a larger scale piece that um, uses different materials like vinyl, paint skins, mixed media, et cetera, et cetera, that are in conjunction with another, one another. Um, so that's it for me. Amy. Oh. Um, I think the question was where we're from and something about our process. Is that right? I was kind of having a hard time hearing it. Um, okay, we're gonna go with that. I am from Cincinnati originally and my process um, is kind of hard to separate really from the work for me. Like the, the process is the work typically um, everything is that you see in the gallery now has been pretty heavily impacted by my direct live, ex 
lived experience and kind of me using material to reconstruct the things that are like haunting me um, and as a as a tool for like dealing with trauma essentially um, and and a, like an unburdening of the self and so um, I think all of the pieces are heavily layered with just a variety of material and the contexts are always kind of like indoor and outdoor spaces commingling um, and and the figures and the spaces that I'm describing or creating are all pretty pretty impacted by the ideas around mass incarceration. So interior spaces of cells, um, prisons, like brick, bricks, blocks, razor wire, um, and then also like bridges, schools, your bedroom, and how these spaces are kind of very similar and, and thinking deeper about the intents of those spaces and how to kind of reconstruct them and um, maybe reshape them in the future. I'm guessing that's my call to go. Uh, <clears throat> hello, sorry everybody. Uh, I lost my voice at the show yesterday. Uh, I was singing and dancing, but my name is Tyler Davis. Nice to, nice to meet you all. Uh, I've been kind of making art low key from like a wee lad up until like now. Um, I went to arts in impact middle school specifically to kind of get in that weird tunnel that was funneling like students to CCAD kind of thing. Um, my work has always dealt with me trying to figure out my own mental health and understand learning and understanding that the health world isn't very made for people like us. And um, because of that, I've had to find a lot of solace in you know, finding figures and icons within music and media. And that has kind of snowballed and helped me figure out more of who I am and more of my culture. And then as I have essentially gone down that rabbit hole this, this idea and aspect of trying to essentially, everything that we're working on is essentially everything that's trying to keep specifically people that look like me, like creatives like me down to obviously keep certain people in. Uh, but getting to the point of understanding some of these things are made to keep certain youth down uh, and stunting like creativity, um, finding a, you know, through this like time of COVID and whatnot, uh, that is something creatives that look like me have had a, a lot of time, like a struggle of like how to create and whatnot. And I feel like for us, it's different because a lot of our creativity comes from, from obviously our trauma. And obviously we have generations, generations and generations of trauma. And um, I don't know, just how much within music and art that like is to help us to figure out just who we are and um, there's people out here trying to, you know, keep it so we don't figure that out. But uh, my process generally deals with me sitting in a room, listening to music, and just letting my brain just low key just paint the picture. Um, that is something I can even connect back to some of my earliest memories to uh, <laughs> my grandmother playing Corinne Bailey Ray. I also have to thank my mother for getting me into Waka Flocka Flame. Uh, just the amount of knowledge that they have given me to truly make me a better person. Um, that's also something in my work I try to do is critique myself as a means of also critiquing the black man. Um, to me, in the greater scheme of the world, I think we all need to be doing that as a means of clearing our own pond to make the, you know, obviously the bigger picture of the world better. But I just listen to music to tell you the truth and figure out, try to think about myself and my past and the people I love and hold very close to myself as a means to try to allow and someone else that looks like me to connect to it, to potentially help them figure themselves out, to open the door to another lane. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much, everybody. That's a great start. Uh, we talked earlier about the uh, process for this conversation, and it really is that, a conversation. I have some questions to get us uh, started, uh, but I know that there are some members uh, that are here live in the gallery right now, um, some members of our audience that have some questions. So go ahead and shout out questions if you have them.
start. Um, the question was, um, what's our biggest inspiration? Hmm. I think that's been very difficult for me. That's been ever changing, honestly. Um, I have um, I have various inspirations from my own life, um, just from even my own walk of life. There are things that I've grown up viewing and seeing um, that have pushed me into um, this desire to be an animator. But um, as I've been there and as I've been seeing kind of like the reflection of the process itself, and then on top of that, the reflection of, well, am I fitting here? Uh, I've been gearing away as if to more so uh, look at like my animation, like ins my old animation inspirations as a reference point to critique um, everything as a whole. So now then just my inspiration just comes from like my livelihood. Um, it comes from, you know, even my own faith. It comes from the areas in my life where I'm being dealt with um, and then how to take that process critically and put it into the work into into my work so um other other people can receive it um but also but what has really inspired me recently for the show is um that this season in my life where my vulnerability where the expression of my vulnerability as a black woman is being exposed and where in reflection to the media that is out there, the expectation is um, a strength, you know, that is unhuman. Um, and then the expectation is kind of like this, um, an idol that is not human. That I feel like is a perversion of who I am. I can't be God for other people. And then just the value that I'm learning myself that, you know, the value of our tears, you know, and the value of our um, just crying. There's something that actually breaks in our tears. There's something that actually breaks in our vulnerability. You know, the world is, is saying otherwise. There's something that actually breaks, you know what I mean? When we're full human and not half human. Um, so that's been my, just like, that's what I was talking about in terms of like the root of my inspiration isn't coming necessarily from what's being made anymore, but what's being transformed in me. Um, so that's my answer, very long. <laughs> um, so what is your inspiration is like a huge question, right? I mean, I think for artists, almost like everything is material for us. We just process things so differently. Um, I can say that I'm definitely inspired by social practice artists and, and community building artists and um, the community that I'm surrounded with. I'm constantly kind of pouring out and getting rebuilt. And so um, just my people, I guess, is what kind of really inspires me and allows me to have a, a space to make work and um, explore things. And uh, there was a question in the chat about the phone booth, so I'll just answer it really quickly. Um, the phone booth was given to me as a gift from a local artist, and it came out of a gay bar and uh, didn't have any of its components. So I put a mirror on the back. It has a phone now that I somewhat experimented with adding some analog technology to, and it was not super successful, as the other artists in the show can attest to. There's some fails with the phone booth. Um, but it does have a QR code now and you can scan it and you can listen to about 15 minutes of me uh, reading some letters and the letters. So I have a brother that's doing um, life in prison. And when I was incarcerated, our letters obviously changed because we were writing them from the same space. And so uh, it's just like a snippet of me reading some of his letters uh, to me because he's actually going back to court next month with the Innocence Project. And there's just a lot um, going on for me emotionally, like outside of the community work or my personal experience. It's like deeply entrenched in my family. And so um, it just felt like a really good way to make that 
piece communicative, but for the people that are in the gallery, there are pins. So please tag it if you'd like to, um, and I'll pass. Uh, <clears throat> um, honestly, my biggest inspiration is truly just life. Um, I'm, as I get older, uh, something that I picked up when I was in like really young from some random guy was uh, <laughs> every nigga is a philosopher is the idea of every, every colored person truly has a story or has something that has been specifically done to them, makes them unique or different. Um, just talking to people, my family is a cast of characters, uh, the idea of aspect of, you know, as the child, we essentially absorb like bits and pieces of them to essentially give out to the world kind of thing. Uh, I also look at the entire world as one big sitcom. Um, <laughs> as a kid, I've always looked at, uh, in my brain, everything is an Ed, Ed, and Eddie and Robot Chicken, like mesh of some sorts. Um, music, as I said earlier, uh, my biggest, Art, visual visual art influences are honestly a bunch of rappers and musicians and uh, comedians kind of thing. Um, also allowing like my subconscious and just the idea of just like that childhood child aspect of oneself to essentially, uh, I'm pretty sure everybody has it within them that, that sense of urgency where you see something where you like that tingly sensation that you get in the back uh, whenever I'm going around or just like walking around if I look at something and that goes off, I just pick it up and I just take it. Like, I guess also hoarding, um, also uh, satire, just being funny. How annoying and goofy can I be and about like getting the information that I want that I feel like needs to be given across, uh, you know, the idea and un the unfortunate reality of, of people stopping at a certain point because they're afraid to talk about black people. Well, yeah, life. It's <laughs> pretty much it. Appreciate it. Um, or if it makes you feel comfortable. Um, uh, so materials. I am kind of obsessed with materials. I taught myself to make art um, in a space where I didn't have access to very many materials and they were incredibly precious. So um, I've always kind of had a, a, a thing with wanting con to conserve things because they're expensive, but also wanting to like make a mess and experiment and, and learn. Um, so almost all of my work, it starts in a similar way, which is a, a foundation of acrylic painting and ink washes um, until I kind of get something happening in the background that works for me. Um, or that I see. It's a kind of a pretty intuitive process. And I hate to say that word because it sounds so lame, but it really is. And then um, once things start to become apparent to me, I choose to bring them forward in different ways. Um, this piece, let me just shake it up. This piece is a lot, a lot about material for me. It's like covered in glitter and uh, beads, um, markers, chalk, like anything I could put on this surface, I put on here. Um, and then there's a map pin for every prison in the state um, on this. So this figure is like a real experiment for me in terms of creating people that look like materials, like stone, and then also um, using crafty kind of stuff to talk about really important things. And that's it. Like there's 
there's no material that can't be fine art material. I really connect to the idea that you can use anything you want, um, however you want. Uh, hello. Um, remind me of the question. Um, material. Oh, um, I just, am I on mute? Um, honestly, whatever, um, whatever the piece is calling for, what specifically I'm trying to say, uh, half the time I'll have an image in my head and just let that image just kind of sit and fester and explore. Uh, again, just the idea of like thinking of the artwork as life itself is like, I wasn't the same person who I was when I was five or 10. Just the idea of like, like I've learned things or like things have come to me and kind of altered and changed. Uh, I'm also someone that kind of also tries to create challenges for myself. Uh, obviously going out and like searching and picking up stuff. Uh, right now I use, uh, you've probably seen them, the big construction tarps. If you've seen gone around downtown or any like downtown place uh, as a means of just talking about, you know, obviously we all can see I'm black. Uh, it's something that I've seen that is used to protect, to hold, hide, and also conceal. And, you know, obviously being in Columbus, we're going in a time where they're talking about the, the end of construction is going to end by like 2025 or whatever. Um, obviously, where I'm, I grew up, gentrification is something that I'm constantly thinking of. Uh, so that's that, a big portion of my work is dealing with, you know, construction uh, tarp, uh, a lot of hardware. <laughs> I love duct tape. Uh, just the whole idea and aspect of if you talk to anyone that does any hardware stuff, it's like that running gag or joke of, you know, if you can't fix it, just put duct tape on it. So um, anything really. Uh, Again, anything that grabs my attention and that calls for it, um, the sky's the limit. <laughs> Why keep yourself to one place? Why not be a variety of things? So, yeah. So my, um, in the same vein as Tyler, as far as like, I think about what the, um, when materials are needed and what materials um, are needed towards the vision of a piece. Um, I've been thinking more of getting very on the mark as far as like referencing animation. Um, I've been experimenting with paint skins because it's a, you know, it's a cool way to turn um, a more standard two dimensional approach to like making like an animation cell um where then just the viewer just then internalized that that is a flat object to a paint skin that becomes more of a um object itself you know more of like a relief in the sense that the paint itself is the object um that holds the image um now to materials kind of like this where it's uh, you know essentially acetate is plastic um uh, and working with the layering process of um, like the animation pipeline that, you know, you, you go from layering sketches with, you know, more transparent paper to like layering more finalized drawings to like painting, you know, and then painting backgrounds and like then layering on top of uh, that, you know. Um, then I'm more so thinking, and I'm going to walk around in the way that Amy uh, walked around, which I'm more so thinking about the object itself of like, say, uh, animation peg bar, for instance. So this one for what this piece is, has really inspired me to uh, like make molds and make objects. Um, that one is out of wax. And so just like kind of like how Tyler was talking about his process, it's kind of just like that, like for what that piece, for what the vision for what that piece is and what that piece is saying, I have to use different materials um, for that. And that wax is made from um, a candle that I um, like to burn in my studio um, when I'm making work. So it's just kind of like the aroma um, where I'm also thinking about um, are a couple of verses about like the aroma and your life being and, and what it means to kind of like live a life that's a sweet smelling aroma. And then that 
piece kind of that like battle between like what that looks like as far as like the animation world itself um, and my place in it as I'm pouring into this practice in a way. So it was really like, it was, it was required for me to like use the can, you know, the wax, some other materials I use are, you know, straight up animation paper, you know, stuff that just has its like reference points um, that aesthetically makes sense, but then also conceptually that we can just kind of like distort and kind of like use to kind of go deeper into like what the concept is for the piece. Uh, I was fortunate enough uh, to find an apartment how long ago? Two, two years ago with an attic that it was a mess and I essentially like cleaned it out and like put a light in it essentially just made it my own studio and whatnot so again I had to I was fortunate enough to like have that and be able to be in there but because of the work I'm making and obviously what it's talking about I'm in an attic I feel like ah, the entire time kind of thing. But it, to me, it also the whole thing of like, as artists, we should, you know, the idea we be, essentially start to become the art ourselves. I mean, obviously we're walking advertisement for what we're putting up on the wall kind of thing. But then it's like, as I research more about music and whatnot, the idea of the piano and the monster, just the idea of just like the pair, again, parallels, and that's important to my work, but, uh, in a dark attic with a really like a light just beaming down on me it's really nice big space to allow me to like make big work like so um which i really appreciate a lot but uh but yeah um and i do all the painting kind of in a, a room and then also outside to get like, time away kind of thing so it's just i'm one of those people if there's a will there's a way like really even if it's i have to go outside and make it kind of thing <laughs> but yeah. Okay, sorry. There we go. But anyway, <laughs> I'll speak like this. And so basically, um, 
man, I have been kind of privileged in a way. I can't, I, I know what it what is like though, when artists, cause I, at one point didn't have a studio. I was just making my grandma's. And I say as advice is like that, I think it's a season where it forces us to really sit and uh, consider the materials that we're making. Sometimes having a restriction, um, restrictions can tend to bring more freedom. Um, so having a restriction on what you're able to do makes you really, forces you to really think outside the box and forces you to really think towards like what you're doing. And I know when the grant process, when the, when the grants went down and they're more focused on uh, people who were um, struggling during COVID, um, there is just access to like materials that I just didn't have because I was on an unemployment and I couldn't really just buy myself materials. So that kind of helped me really rethink with what I have. And so as as much as I've as much as I've been blessed, I kind of, you know, don't fully understand the the full weight of all the artists who've kind of like been in that position where they were um in dire straits and struggling during COVID. Um, but there's a little a little bit of that um kind of like restriction that I at least went through before. And that it really sharp, it, it, I feel like for, it really sharpens you as an artist um, or there's, or if it didn't, there's a hope that it can and still can, you know what I mean? Um, and I think some of the best work I've seen has come from that, from that COVID experience. And it's been um, sobering and mournful, but also really cool. Um, so yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough not to lose any friends or family to COVID. So, um, I did experience, like I lost my second income, um, and I'm like a single mom and in school and I have like a part-time job. So that second income was a lot, um, for me that I wasn't able to get any other, like whatever unemployment or anything like that didn't happen for me. So that the financial strain was tough. Um, and I did lose studio space uh, last May. Um, and so I had to take my stuff into my dining room and there's so much glitter in my dining room still right now that I cannot get out. Um, we'll probably be there when they inspect my apartment and try to leave type stuff. And so it was tough to like sacrifice the only extra room that we have and like sacrifice family dinners and stuff like that to try to finish this work um but on the flip side you know I got into uh doing a lot of uh, wheat paste and graffiti over the summer um I did some murals so I was able to engage with public art really for the first time I never really had the opportunity to do that and then also just find new ways to express myself and really into scale. And so I was like, oh, graffiti makes a lot of sense. I can be outside away from other people and do things that are really large. Um, or, oh, wheat paste makes sense. We're in this really turbulent environment and, and how can we you know, work towards justice together, I guess. Um, and so I think COVID was kind of a, a blessing in that way because it got me making art outside of my dining room but in terms of the pieces that are in here it was a real challenge to finish them for sure what i've made and how it's going to affect um the work that what i've made here but, um man i think and i was kind of saying this a little bit earlier my process has really changed i i really 
I used to do a lot of work that had a lot of shock value. And then I had to really ask the question, especially during now, um, that um, am I, is my work doing the same thing itself that um, I'm talking against it? You know, am I reperpetuating these things I'm, you know, saying as far as like my work is like to kind of like tear down? I found the answer was yeah. <laughs> um, I found that my whole kind of like idea of art has been just completely shifted. Um, my whole idea of how I make and how I'm inspired is completely changing. Um, my whole goal, my whole purpose of my art is completely like being renewed, but then also like shifting focus to shifting something with, with a little bit less weight, weight of like a hustle of brand, like a hustle of grandeur and a hustle of, you know, building myself up in the world um, to really just having it be more of an expression of my life um, or not specifically my life, but um, the seasons and the areas that I'm growing in um, and then what I see and how to articulate what I see better. Um, I don't know necessarily where my work is going to go um, and how uh, kind of deep I want my work to go. But I know, I remember when I first, this show, I've been working on a show for a year, but I've had to like surrender this show maybe three times. Um, the work I wanted to have in this show is not here because I was just convicted in my heart about what I was making. And the uh, mothers of, you know, the son, the, you know, sons and daughters and friends who were uh, in, in, in uh, the fathers of, um, you know, uh, Michael Brown. And, you know, if you guys heard about the statements about uh, Tamir's, uh, um, Tamir Rice's mother, what they are talking about as far as like, um, the art that's being produced um, and things that are being produced without their consent with the faces of um, these dead men and women, you know what I mean? I've had I, that, that I, I never understood why I was first kind of like steered away towards last year, like don't continue to do that kind of type of, don't, don't continue to do that type of artwork. Um, consider deeply you know what I mean until I recently saw those statements and that was kind of like a wow like because like there actually is something like greater than just I'm expressing myself towards an issue or something like that and then on top of that how I used to express myself towards an issue and artwork would be it just wasn't it's just not sufficient I feel anymore um, for me to continue and then hearing actually the heart of people who would be be affected by like certain imagery um, is really it's powerful is really um, it makes me really step back and so I don't know I I, I just I just know um, that I can't continue to do art the same way that I was taught to do art and I can't continue to put down the things uh, the same way I used to put down because I don't even know what I'm I don't know what's I don't know what I'm putting out there um and I don't want to put anything out there that will re-traumatize somebody um unless it you know there's a work back there that is called God Sees and that was more of a personal work that I never thought I kind of would want to like expose to the world because it is graphic but I did feel like that was very important. I don't know if I'll ever show that piece again, to be honest. So, you know, in public, so taking it in as you can, but um, I'm really convicted about that process. Shock value, yeah, I think. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Hey again, um, I guess I can talk uh, specifically about moving forward. Um, question was, uh, so for me, a lot of the work I make is obviously, as I said earlier, dealing with a lot of uh, 
me thinking back to my past and a lot of the things that uh, I consider negative, the whole idea of a negative isn't a negative, it's a positive. The idea if it hasn't killed you, it makes you stronger. That, you know, that whole, da, da, da. Um, to be able to even talk about like uh, these portraits I did right here specifically, um, going into the idea of mental illness and insecurity thing. Um, I remember back in high school, I had a teacher explain to me uh, the idea that um, children essentially paint or draw themselves the way that they see themselves. And she showed me this uh, one video where it showed you, you know, this is the way the white kids draw themselves, whether it's fully fleshed out. And then the difference between the white kids and the black kids and, you know, so on and so forth with the race. Um, just this idea of just like trying to figure out my own insecurities. Uh, and as I like do that and then, um, <laughs> sorry, mom, I'm gonna throw you under the bus. Uh, Obviously, my mom is a single mother. Um, I'm the first son kind of thing. So we've had like a very rocky relationship. But recently, I've, got, I've obtained a car and I'm able to like you know, go back and forth and like low key be able to like talk and understanding like that is it, like truly a privilege is to be able to like act and talk to my mother and my grandmother about their past and about myself as a means of bettering myself. Um, and through doing that, something I noticed with myself is a uh, I took like a four year hiatus from painting portraits and I've noticed all that stuff starting to click back and uh, you know, my process becoming a little more fluid and things being more fleshed out and something funny when I, me and my mom weren't really talking to one another, I had the hardest time painting women just in general to the point I low key refused to paint black women and I only painted white women kind of thing. Um, and again, that, me going through this essentially as a guidance counselor, trying to say to the other black kids in my neighborhood, that, that's something I, you know, I will need to focus on my backyard before I even like try to fix anything in the greater scheme of the world. Just being, you know, uh, insecurities for us are essentially to block us from essentially seeing the beauty and like what is around us, uh, that there's truly beautiful things for you know, colored children and whatnot. Um, uh, and then I'm also someone that, you know, I am a challenge and I understand that I am a challenge. And because of that, I try to, you know, cause myself to have challenges to help me make work, which goes along with some of the things that uh, Annie has been has said in the past. But yeah, pretty much it. I think the question was something about like catharsis. Um, and I guess for me that is very true. Uh, I make the work that I make because I have to. I absolutely don't have another option uh, for mental health or for spiritual practice in some way um, or for just a place for things to go. Um, the piece that's behind me, I made for my grandma when she passed last year. And, um, you know, I, I feel honored to have made the painting for her in some way. Like, the painting was a gift for me to paint. Um, and sometimes they feel like that. Sometimes they're really, you know, special and you can walk away from a, a work and feel like you did it justice or your vision was, you know, achieved. And then there are other things like this glitter monstrosity that I will probably take home and add more glitter to when it leaves here, you know, because I can't divorce myself from it totally. Um, but in general, I think to, to be an artist and to, to do the work and then to get to a, the point of a show always feels really, really great. And it feels um, kind of nice to, to be able to put things up and take them away from myself for a little while and like have them live somewhere else and um, give myself a little bit of space to think about new ideas or what I'm gonna do next. So yeah, I think that's all I got. I forgot one thing. Uh, also, something that's been really fun is uh, I I, hold, I collect a bunch of little like figurines and little angels. Uh, something I've noticed as a means of also connecting with people that look like me is uh, if, you know, little angel figure, black angel figurines within homes. And it's also been a fun little scavenger hunt to be able to go see my grandma. <laughs> I just wanted to say that.
crap okay i got it Ooh, i it's really hard as an artist to know what other people see when they see your work um and part of me really wants to know and another part of me absolutely does not want to have any clue what people are thinking when they're looking at the work um but i think my hope is that things are starting to be cohesive enough that when you see enough of the work you start to draw some pretty clear ideas and um you know you see repeated images or um ideas that people can start to like latch on to hopefully um but you know really kind of selfishly i don't know i make the work because i've just got to do it um and then i worry about what people will take from it later like how they'll receive it later i mean i think that's like the job of trying to market your art which as an artist i find really really difficult so um yeah i don't know i try to divorce myself as much as possible from the viewer uh and so we get to this part so i'm, I'm in, always interested to hear what people see and um what they think The question is, is what I want or like, what do I expect from people to take away from the work? Uh, honestly, whatever you want, like truly, uh, what were you saying? sorry. Um, honestly, whatever. I mean, again, as I said, all of this is truly just from me, like figuring myself out and just like my thoughts like out there. Um, I'm more interested of in knowing like what, when looking at this, what are the first things like you think or like, what is the, your impression? The idea of something I always want to happen is to create conversations the idea of, to me that's essentially i think all we're here to do is essentially spread knowledge help better one another and grow as a community and as people um so the idea hopefully hoping someone's just like hey i like this tell me you know this is how i feel let's talk about it i like dave chappelle do you ever hear that episode just the idea of just using things that the idea of making connections as a means of like growing friendships and love and happiness and joy you know more of that kind of thing um so i mean uh you cry and then you go on and then you start to laugh laughter is the best medicine kind of thing it's that whole idea and aspect um for me it depends on the piece um some pieces are, are very self-expression, but some pieces I actually really do want to get something from the audience. Um, a lot of the pieces in the work, I want the audience to actually critically think, um, though I won't force them to think some type of way, but it's very, um, my work I desire it to be very intentional um, towards a specific goal, which is, is I think why I've had to really rethink about how I make if there is a specific goal, um, is it, am I getting that goal across? Um, and so the work, especially for the show, I kind of want to recenter. There's some pieces where it's like the mixture of, you know, rethinking about uh, vulnerability, expressing uh, vulnerability with uh, Black female characters, especially specifically darker skinned female characters, because of colorism, there's this correlation, um, and um, how we create, since especially um, it's very popular to represent Black women, but, you know, during the times where African Americans, African Americans who uh, were in slavery or were free, but and had access to be able to make, you know, their stories, um, when they kind of started like speaking up about the injustice of slavery um, was when more black representation kind of happened. Like historically, that's when we kind of get the rise of minstrel shows because it's these people trying to represent black people. You know, the process looks different now. And so, um, but still the same thing in a sense. And so the goal is how can I in my work make a viewer rethink what they're seeing. Then going on to protest imagery, I've been having confliction with that. Um, you know, 
I think protest imagery for like my work, the goal for my work and what I have in the show is to even reconsider that as well. Um, is that a means for many people to, in my mind, what's been on my heart is to practice drawing black people, you know, or is it specifically um, to speak or to say something? And then here's kind of like a reference point to kind of think, okay, if you say it is, then I wanna make these pieces that can at least point some things to consider, you know, to deeply consider, um, to have a self-reflection, you know? Um, and then there's other things that are tied into it. It just, for me, is the specific work that is being made um, in the specific topic and what's the specific goal. Um, some of my pieces are actually like the more painter skin, the more paint skin pieces are self-reflections or self, um, are like more so journals as if I were to um, take what I was kind of like receiving in my work time with God and putting it um, out and having a conversation with him and then showing it to people. Um, and so it just depends. I, but I just definitely want to be definitely very goal oriented about my work. Um, here's a question in the chat. Does a show like this change your work in any way? And how will this showing influence your next work? Because uh, I kind of have a weird thing where I had to do my audio. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think because um, I think the thing that it does change uh, is there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of vision that I had for certain pieces um, to see if they would work like this piece. I mean, we're going to see. I want to make work, work kind of like that. Um, it kind of exposed to me specifically like areas that I need to work on in my own discipline of like making art. Um, even down to the bone of revealing certain um, certain holes, you know, and what like what do I have? What's sufficient? So the process of making this like animation, I thought I had everything worked out, and I thought it was going to be easy. Come to find out, my laptop has actually progressively, slowly, outside of my conscious, has been sucked. Has been sucked sucky just just it sucks now it's like what happened to you three years ago you were okay did you all of a sudden become so sick but then it's like a process of okay um being prepared more prepared um for that um because now it's like I'm stuck in the middle of like it takes 20 minutes for something for one millisecond or something to render and so getting materials beforehand. I mean, there's just a lot that like, um, I can be more in the process of making in general and see kind of where those, where there's insufficiencies and kind of like what I have and work on those things just over the course of time. This show has also made me reconsider like art. <laughs> like, I think, I think I keep on saying this, but like, you know, what's this art hustle, you know what I mean? What's this kind of like, I think in the sense for, I, 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 I wish art was not the way it was and I wish making was not the way it was. I wish it was not the sense of you trying to find value in the marketplace, but you are already valuable as a person. You're already valuable in what you make. Um, and so making a heart, has revealed to me in the show, like making the work for the show has revealed to me certain areas where I've really attached myself to that, like want for the American dream and the hustle and the bustle of everything. And I don't wanna say it's stupid because it has its place, um, but there's no true freedom in it. You know what I mean? Um, and the hope is that I can continue as an artist to like work in the freedom of first me being, you know, just me being free <laughs> just by the sense of you know where I'm at in my own like walk and then also 
what ways can like I free others um, through my work? This art show has really been kind of like that for me. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> um, so for this show and just honestly any, I mean, I've been, I, the way I work is just kind of just, I allow the show to truly, again, as I said, like I look at it as life itself, like it's a journey. Um, I allow even just my interactions with the space or like with other things in the world to even like shape what I'm doing. Um, during COVID, during the year of, you know, we're still going through it, but the beginning <laughs> of everything, um, I was racking my brain, obviously, as most artists and most artists that look like me in the sense of trying to figure out like what I can do as a means of, you know, obviously making everybody happy. And then my brain was just like, why, why am I doing that when we're all essentially fighting white supremacy and white supremacy is what made all these rules that we're all trying, like I'm sitting here, my friends are all trying to rack our brains to fit in when essentially they do nothing but already steal from us and just give to other people that look like them to gatekeep us out why not just keep making what I'm doing if people already love what we do kind of thing. So that mentality and allowing me to truly like us through this entire time of like, you know, what I'm reading, researching and like getting into and just, you know, even making the work, I find my, that's becoming more freeing and more giving me more room to explore and like allowing my, it's my brain is truly just like, this is nice. That material is pretty good. Oh, this is, it's, again, freeing in the idea and aspect of like, we're <laughs> sadly you know, thing of we're all like, that cap is on all of our heads to stay in that like mode or whatever, um, to obviously to keep us in that, but that's my spiel. But I'm just gonna make and moving forward, I have my statement. Uh, I'm just gonna keep pushing. Uh, I'm ready to make the music though. It's something I always told myself I'd do after I graduated college is get back into music theory, <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm kind of done with like big art. I want to make small art. That's my plan <laughs> after all this. So. I, was, yeah. I do have an idea for a show after this, but I don't want to like give it out the whole thing of, again, secrecy and journey. Stay, stick with me, y'all. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, I think you always learn a lot about uh, a space when you have a show in it, you get to um, be in a new place and experience that and experience, um, you know, the people that are a part of that. And, and you always get to group show, work with new artists and learn about them and, um, you know, find places of collaboration or, um, you know, conflict, but either way, just like the opportunity to have those interactions has been great. Um, especially after being kind of isolated during COVID. And, you know, I think what I learned about myself or, or maybe the work in the show is that um, I, unlike the other two artists in the room, I absolutely cannot work small um, maybe ever again. And so like thinking more concretely about what I need to do to show large work and how to do that and where to do that um, and why and what's the impact and just more questions always you know like there's never <laughs> there's never really answers it's just like more questions more more information and hopefully more wisdom from from every experience I want to ask a question. Um, so, <laughs> and I'm about to be straight silly, all right? If you could take a walk somewhere, anywhere in the world, <laughs> and hike, where'd you go take a hike? <laughs> Uh, you guys are first. Okay. Okay. 
I feel like I would really like to hike. I feel like I would like to hike uh, more in Georgia. Dangerous for a lot of reasons, but I went, uh, I went back to Georgia um, a year before COVID ha happened um, and got to really like, again, see my dad's side of the family. And one thing about it is like, you know, the rooted history um, of slavery in that time. Um, Cause that's also what my heart is thinking about uh, reparations. Um, and there's the African-American descendant of slave movement, uh, ADOS political movement. Um, and there's so much stories that, you know, I'm disconnected with. Um, and there's areas of Georgia that are like really beautiful um, and there's beaches, but then just that kind of dynamic of like what the history of this beach means for some people are different than what it means, you know, for um, someone who is like uh, the full descendant of slaves. Um, and there's something kind of like, I would, I, would, I would just love because I'm even looking into kind of like the history of like the faith in those of, of, of you know, African-American descendants of slaves, you know, things aren't always so clear cut in that way. Um, but there, there was a, there was a, you know, there's like when you guys, like, like the Gola, for instance, like, you know, their, their, their whole, just the history of their tribe here in America. Um, like there's, there's so much, I would love to take a, a, a hike over in Georgia, maybe with my taser and, <laughs> and, and possibly a knife, but in the company of maybe three or four people, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> as I'm like going. Um, I've already thought, it's funny you ask this because I like, have already thought about it, but um, I want to go to Virginia. I mean, my family's from Virginia. Uh -huh. um, see, I told my grandmother, um, my great, my, we call her grandma Virginia, but um, that's something I want to do just for myself and also the idea and aspect of, uh, I have never truly spent a one-on-one -on -one time as like two people to like truly talk to her kind of thing. And then, um, all of my, it's just funny, my uh, sonically really like all my music influences and then their music influences are all from Virginia. So it's kind of that idea of just, you know, as an adult realizing that and being like, huh, it's kind of also just like might as well, you know, while also seeing my grandma also, my great grandma also taking that history lesson or trip just for myself. Just walk around also, um, walked around, I walked around a lot of here and might as well walk around there since I come from there. A little bit of me comes from there, you know, it's kind of that thing. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I think a lot about Northern California. I always think that that place must be perfect because they have like access to the mountains and the beach. And you like don't have to make that choice there. You can have both. And so um, if I could afford to go somewhere, um, <laughs> would definitely try to spend some time in Northern California. So if anyone has a Northern Cali residency or something like that, uh, shoot that through, please. That's great. Um, thank you all very much. That's our hour together on Zoom. Uh, we do have some people here who are live at um, Roy G. Bibb and we can continue the conversation in person, uh, but that's all the time that we have for our Zoom conversation. So we're gonna sign off and I will, um, just take a moment to, again, thank you all for your patience and understanding while we deal, dealt with these tech issues. And also thanks to our sponsors, uh, the um, organizations that we get funding from to be able to present work by emerging artists, uh, Ohio Arts Council, Greater Columbus Arts Council, and COVA Foundation, the Columbus Foundation. So thank you all very much for your support. And we recorded this, and so we'll be posting it on our YouTube channel in the next day or so. So thank you all very much for joining us today. Thank you.